Yeah, my first question, how'd you get the gig? Um, the Anglophone uh, restaurant community is about this big, uh, in terms of the connectedness, like everybody knows everybody, so. Uh, I got the job through a friend of mine who's the chef at Ember. Okay. Uh, well, he told me of an opportunity and to, uh, to apply, and ten days later I had the job. Very cool. Mm. Where did you come from before, and what do you think of it now? Yeah, were you living here already when that happened? Yeah, I've been living here for the last five years. Okay. I'm um, originally from Vancouver, Vancouver Island area. Um, I did my undergrad at McGill. Uh, and once you get Montreal into your blood, it never leaves you blood. So uh, I uh, went back to Vancouver for a while and pursued some more education there before uh, deciding to come back to Montreal in 2006 and make a go of it. And, uh, uh, I worked in some crummy restaurants for the first few months that I was here, but then I uh, got a job in catering. I've been catering for the last three years. It's enabled me to develop a, a lot more recipes and as well as personally and professionally. So. Okay. And then, yeah, I haven't seen the new menu. What are the changes you've done and incorporated? Because to me, this place has got lots of tradition. I can't imagine a new moisture's menu. Well, well, that's just it. Like, it it's. It's not. It's new in the sense that um, we've uh, added some things that uh, bring us into a, a more modern uh, dining experience. Um, but at the same time, the like it remains quintessentially moisture. So steaks, chops, um, steakhouse fare, nothing. It's not like you go to a McDonald's and suddenly they're preparing you know, foie gras burgers, yeah. you know. It's like right. we're not doing anything ridiculous. Yeah, um, yeah. We're trying to stay really honest and true to what this place has been for the last seven years. So, um, but at the same time, the time was right to uh, introduce things that people might not have been interested in 20 years ago, 30 years ago. But now people want to try and want to eat. We introduced a steak tartare, a salmon tartare, uh, an Alaskan king crab cake, um, smoked chicken. Uh, we've uh, sort of revamped our presentations um, from, for a lot of our dishes out of our garmanger section um, and started putting a lot more focus on that than just on the steaks because uh, the garmanger is often sort of neglected neglected section, but it also produces some of the more complicated, more amazing dishes, visually as well as taste-wise, so um, those are the kinds of changes. That's the new... Okay. So then, and by the way, feel free to interrupt me at any time. So then you envision it as sort of like an ongoing sort of thing, as opposed to being... So my understanding of the moisture beforehand was that it was a fixed menu. Yeah. And now, going forward, would it be... Would I be wrong in saying there are going to be changes incorporated? Yeah. Not daily, but monthly, yearly? Yeah, you're going to do some seasonal... Uh, yeah. We're, we're um, just from my own perspective as a cook, like, trying to serve somebody asparagus in January seems ludicrous. So, you know, right now it's starting to come into season and asparagus is perfect timing. But as we get into like, late October... I'm not going to spend the money, don't want to spend the money on getting asparagus you know, uh, that's late season, woody, uh, doesn't have all the taste. So um, we're uh, looking at rotating our seasonal, our, our grilled vegetable platter to, to more seasonal taste two, three times a year. You know, in the winter, do something more like you know, fennel and uh, onions and uh, carrots and parsnips, things like that. Uh, are traditionally kept around at that time of year, especially in Quebec because it's such a cold and inclement place in the and those things are pretty typical uh, winter food. So, um, also with uh, 
like how famous Quebec is for fresh berries and uh, apples and stuff like that. As those come into season, we're planning on uh, purchasing skids of you know, raspberries and making jams and uh, jellies and uh, coolies and um, preserves and things like that, and incorporating them into the dishes that we, we're going to do in our, in our, of our pastry section, as well as. Uh, if we do special items in the pantry, we can have like a cheese plate or a charcuterie plate with nice uh, you know, jams and jellies to go on with whatever is coming on there, you know, that kind of thing. Um, are your pickles made here? Here? Yeah. No, we, um, uh, to control um, the consistency, they are produced in a commissary kitchen off site. And they, it's the same place that produces the pickles for our retail. Okay, right. So they're like it's your the own. Same. It's the, it's the moisture right, yeah. right. Yeah, it's the moisture's recipe. It yeah. hasn't changed at all. Yep. It's just to keep things consistent and, and sort of consolidate production. It's awesome. Right. right. But it's moisture's food. Right. For sure. No, what was the easiest thing transitioning from catering to running a which one? The kitchen like like moisture's, and then I got to follow up as well. The, did you say the easiest? Easiest, yes. Walking in the door. <laughs> okay. That's about it. Like, everything was pretty tough. It's a big challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of a lot of work to do. Because I, you know, I'm new. I'm, you know, in my 30s. I'm young. Um, most of the guys in the kitchen have been here most of their lives, right? 30, 30 odd years. So trying to break into that culture is really difficult and trying to get people to respect you when you've got you know so little time and you have a lot of pressure to get things done getting them to respect you get on board you know go with you and, and work towards you know this like events like this mm -hmm. and the event we did last night for table of hope and, uh, and even just on a nightly basis mm -hmm. it's tough it's tried hard to crack hard to crack so um, the yeah, the, literally the, the, the simplest thing about this place was just walking in. Because after that, everything was, was a challenge. That was my follow up. Is what was the toughest? Yeah, the, the, yeah, the toughest is is definitely trying to take uh, a group of guys who are really tightly knit and know each other since they were teenagers and young adults. Um, and convince them that what you're doing is worthwhile, is good, is going to make things better for them. And not as simple as taking them all out for beers and saying, we're all in this together. <laughs> no, 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 because, you know, you know, if they, if you're in a situation where right off the bat, you know, there's animosity or like mm -hmm. a little resentment for this new guy coming on, um, they're not even going to want to, yeah, want to go out, so... You know, just worked at um, uh, showing them I could do what they did, showing them that uh, I wasn't here to take advantage of them or make their lives more difficult. Just, you know, certain things needed to be done and it was very demanding, and, but I was tried to be as respectful and, and straightforward and as honest as possible. And at the end of the day, you're not going to make friends with everybody, and I don't expect to, but you know, I need, need to be respected. And, Garnering respect of these guys is tough, and I think I've done a, I think I've done a, I think I've done a